never produced an engine. And, and the way the engine program was, was scheduled to work, it was another kind of a convoluted setup. Like, we did the chassis for the Dodges and the Plymouths, and then sent the Dodge chassis to Ray Caldwell, who had rented, he was from Massachusetts, but they rented a shop in Long Beach. And then they would finish up their cars for themselves. Uh, and their engines were, the, the, the basic engine parts, like the block and some of the cranks and the connecting rod and so forth, were handled through Keith Blacks. And then they were sent to all American racers where they could rub on them and do their own thing, do their own cylinder heads, porting and so forth, their own camshafts, whatever they wanted to do to get their engines up to speed. And then uh, Keith would actually take those same parts and then he would, off in a different room, do, theoretically, do the engines for the Dodge guys. And so th there were supposed to be two separate efforts in the engine department, as there was in the development of the race cars as well. And so, uh, in any event, there came this time in, uh, as approaching the March that I didn't feel that I could, uh, I could make the test date if I didn't have a, an engine. So I called up Pete over at Keith Black's place and said, uh, Pete, do you have a running engine that uh, there? And he said, yeah, sure, we've got a couple of them. I said, well, can you send me one? And he said, whoa, he said, that's not going to work. I said, well, I said, if you want to make the test date in March, I said, you better send me an engine over. And he said, okay, if you want to do it. I said, yes. So he sent the engine over. The truck backed up to the dock. They unloaded it, and then my phone rang. So meeting up at the office. So I went up to the office. Everybody's sitting in there and said, you know, what the is going on? So I explained the situation to him and told him, I said, you know, Miller hasn't talked to me since I got here. And I said, I don't know when we're going to have a, a, a test engine. Plus, I think the first race was in April at Laguna Seca. And so and this I, was when now? Uh, this would now have been 1970. No, no, I mean the month. I'm sorry. The oh, month. well, it was like late February. You're supposed to test through March and then be at the race in March. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. And oh, so, awesome. and I said, I got two cars to be at Laguna Seca, so we need two engines plus two spares. I need four engines, and I said, we haven't even got one test engine. It sounds like you just wanted a race car early so you could go and play around with it on your own time. Maybe, but no, it was the same. <laughs> so. I said, that's why I got this engine in there. So anyways, the, out, uh, the outcome of that meeting was that they gave me uh, one of their, shop, one of their uh, machine shop foremen who, who did all the machining work on engines. So his name was Jim Wright, who ultimately became to be a very, very noted engine builder for Indy cars and so forth. Uh, worked a lot with uh, uh, Menard, Menard on their, their uh, aluminum blocked uh, Buicks and so forth. Anyway, they gave they, they assigned him to me to build the the, the, the race engine and well, and and I, I can't remember I think I ended up using that engine to test with the Keith Black engine, but he started to build the, the race engine so that we would have engines to go race with, and that continued on uh, on throughout the year, and uh, so we were able to test and uh, and get everything uh, you know pretty much sorted out. And uh, I mean, ultimately the program, obviously we, we didn't win the series, of course, uh, uh, but the thing that I always, I think, and I can't remember exactly, but I think in the, like in the first six races we sat on the pole four times, something like that. And the regular engine, I said, you know, uh, uh, I said, we've been here for two days, and you know, I gave him the whole spiel. So he said, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care, you're gonna, you're going to tear that engine out. I said, okay, well, then, you know, don't bother me now. I mean, we're ready to come back. We'll, we'll talk about it later. So we led for about 10 or 12 laps, and then there was a scheduled pit stop and, and because it was a long track, four and a half miles or, or so. And so we came in for the scheduled pit stop, filled up with fuel, maybe changed back, but Swede was so pumped that when he left, he, he let the clutch out so hard that the whole rear axle just vibrated all over the place and unbeknownst to us at the time he cracked the the uh, the rear axle housing because it was a trick part that we got from NASCAR it was an <laughs> aluminum uh, case that that we put the, the aluminum pig essentially with, with the gear and um, again they said oh it's bulletproof don't worry about it and so we ended up cracking that so out on the back stretch actually it ran out of juice and seized up the ring of pinion, and that's where it got parked for the whole, for the rest of the race. And so meanwhile, then it started to rain a little bit and so forth, so I went over and talked to Tomanis and 
begged off, but he wouldn't. He wasn't giving. But we finally compromised, and he allowed us to go. I said, "Yeah, I mean, you're going to make these guys tear the engine down in the rain and stuff." He co we compromised, and he allowed us to P and G the engine. I don't know if you remember what that was, but it was a little gauge. Of, it was essentially a, a flow meter. You hook it up to your one of the cylinders and crank the engine over and go up like that and give you the displacement. There was a lot of ways to cheat at, but we weren't ready to cheat it at that point. So it was legitimate, and the engine was okay, and, and off we went. So that uh, that was a, uh, uh, I think, like one of the, the the best races that we had in my mind. That race, even though we didn't even finish it. Uh, Bob, how it? would how would you cheat that? Cheat what? The PNG. Oh uh, well, I did it once in uh, in the Baby Grand uh, because in the in the beginning they didn't. Tell you what cylinder? Oh, you always prepare the cylinder, right? Okay. So what I did is I drilled a little tiny hole in the exhaust pipe, and then we had a rod, a welding rod, see, and we'd stick it under the valve. So when then when you came in, it's so much of it would leak out, and we had, and, you know, and, and so now it wouldn't go this high, it wouldn't go that. Uh -huh. Yeah, because one time. We were forced during, because of circumstances, I had broken the engine at Bristol. It was a car that I had built uh, at Hearst. As a, it was like a little carrot they gave me, so they sponsored a, a, a Dodge Dart that, uh, that myself and Dan Mancini, we went, I raced, I drove it at Darlington, Charlotte, and, well, first Bristol, Darlington, and Charlotte, and Atlanta, but at Bristol, the engine blew. And so we, Borrowed an engine from engineering, but it happened to be a 340. <laughs> so we had to accommodate. So so we decided. So that's how you cheat. But, uh, or whatever. Uh, anyhow, I was going to tell you about. Uh, I don't know this morning some of you may, but there was a, a, a Dan English gave a little lecture about smoothness and so forth like that. And uh, Dan has been. I mean, I'd say he's a hard. Uh, he was a hard guy to. To, uh, to develop a car with, but, but he was probably one of the smoothest drivers that, that, that there was around. And uh, so at Riverside, which was the last race of the year, um, the, well, Chrysler had Chrysler had cut the program about halfway through the year and cut the budget, and they assumed that Dan would drive and that he would retire. Uh, sweet, but he said, no, the hell with you guys. Sweet's going to drive, and I'm not going to drive. So they had to accept that. There was nothing they could do about that. But at the, I think it was the last two races, I think uh, we went to Portland, Oregon, and then of course Riverside, which is where he actually retired. Uh, he just, the cars were there and he just, you know, put AAR money to prep the cars and we went to Riverside. And uh, so bo both of them drove. Uh, and uh, so it was, uh, the f I don't know where they were, but like third, fourth, something like that, you know, in the, in the race. And it was the first scheduled pit stop. Uh, and they, and Swede was supposed to come in first, so uh, and it was before we didn't have you know communication, so we had pit board. So we got mm -hmm. Swede in, and we were planning on of course at Riverside changing the left side tires, uh, but when we pulled the tires off and the Goodyear guys were right there, and they they came up to me and said you got to change the other tire, man. He says this thing is gone. So I said oh shit, okay. So we we weren't really set up to change tires on both sides of the car. So we had to do it one at a time, so we jacked up the other side and uh, changed the rear tire, and uh, which was the right side, and the right front was fine. And, uh, and, and so then we sent him out. Now then we looked the tires over and they were really, really shredded. And so I said, okay, well, and Goodyear didn't know. I said, oh, maybe we got a problem with the tire. You know, we're thrashing around trying to figure out what's going on. And so then I decided to call in Dan and He's not coming in. He wasn't supposed to come in for another 10 laps or something. I guess it was. He wasn't coming in. So I put the sign again. And finally he comes in. And oh, and meanwhile, we had constructed a, or, or configured a way that we, would able, we were able to change both rear tires. We had two jacks, and it was pretty precarious, but we got two jacks jacked up because we had the plates jacked up the car so that we would have it. It was kind of shaky. And then change both rear tires because we didn't want to, you know, go to one side, the other side would take too much time. And we'd already lost a lot of time this year. So we had that all, and that worked cool. But Dan came in, he was pissed. And he yelling and screaming, and that was hard for me to hear, but he was saying something about me, I'm Dan Gurney, you know, and, and all that sort of thing. Because I tried to explain to him why we brought him in, because, you know, Sweet had 
had really destroyed his tires. So anyway, we got done with that, let him down, sent him out on his way. And sure enough, man, that, those back tires were like pristine. Couldn't believe they were the same car, basically the same setup. They weren't, they weren't very different in the way they set up the cars. And so that it's just in a testament to, to, to how well, uh, how smooth of a driver he was. They were, they were um, I mean, he could have gone half the race with those tires, whereas Swedes were just gone. I mean, it was just nothing but trash. So uh, there is a lot to the fact that, that you know, a smooth driver can, can do a lot with the car. And Dan was smooth. Uh, anyways, we, we uh, uh, it, it went downhill from there. He got so upset that he went off the track and broke the front spoiler and was dragging us. We had to come in, we changed the spoiler. Ended the race, he's chewing on my ear about the fact that, you know, we lost the race because we ca I called him in. And, and so I uh, got a little upset and said, well, if you hadn't gone off the track and uh, thrashed the spoiler and had to come back in again, I said, we would have been in a better position. So boy, that was a bad thing to say. So we, we had a little blowout there and then didn't talk for a few days, but we we got over it afterwards. But, uh, no, he was a hell of a driver, and uh, just not the kind of driver that I'd like to, to develop a car with. That's all. He was so fussy. I mean, God, he sometimes he'd spend um, half an hour getting the seat adjusted for himself. You know, I mean, he drove me crazy. So I gave him uh, the, the crews, the crew guys. I said, okay, you. In fact, at the at the on the starting, I got so numb to it at the starting grid. At uh, at uh, Riverside, he we were on the starting grid, and he wanted uh, a jet change or something, a carburetor. I said, "Hey, we can't." And so Bobby Box was the crew chief, and I said, "Bobby, I said, do whatever he wants. I said, just when you when the starter was, just get the hell out of the way, so nobody runs you over, and <laughs> leave the car there if you aren't finished." Anyways, Dan changed his mind, and everything was fine. 